Sure, tap in, cause I am hip hop man. Sports measures media, man. They got me mapping like I'm locked and ready to get my slug on. I load my clip and slip my motherfucking gloves on. I ain't scared to blast only suckers if they test me. Trust, I got my block cop playing if they press me. Bust some motherfuckers with a dash and better talk I ain't looking when I'm blasting. I'm a nut and drinking in the sea and getting high on the lookout for my enemies. Don't want to die, tell me why, cause the stress is getting major. I fuck 50 across the face with my razor. What can I do? I'll be a thug until I'm dead and gone. My brain on the game and stay headstrong These sorry bastards wanna kill me in my sleep I'm really cannot see and every day is just a struggle Steady thugging on the streets and I've been ballin' loke Don't let them make you worry Keep swinging at these suckers till you worried I was born and raised Hell, I'm nigga from the gutter Work the mother, I'm touched I'm kicking dust up, ready to bust I'm on the scene, steady mugging me Until they kill me, I'll be living this life What is, baby? All right, all right What up? Right, this is Sports Betters Media. I am Hip Hop Mag C11 Studios. Got special guest in the building tonight. Tease, one time for Raleigh's own, Mr. Larry. Trey Larry. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Trey, let us know where you're from and what area code you're repping, Jack. Hey, man. Double R, Rough Riley, 919. Man, born and raised, 99. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it, man. Tap in. Anybody you want to give a shout out to before we get started? One, shout out to Mom Dukes, Pops. Uh, shout out to all my um, my coaches that helped me get to where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to my brothers. Shout out to my LBs repping the Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated. Yep. Um, man, shout out to anyone and everyone that's helped me. Very good. Very good. All right. Trey Larry in the building. Best podcast, North and South. For all the viewers and fans that don't know, Trey, where did you play high school football at? Yeah, I went to Millbrook, uh, mm -hmm. Millbrook High School, um, 2017, and graduated in uh, 20... Oh, I ain't going to 20... I'm tripping. Oh, I graduated in 2017, my bad. Okay. But I uh, went to school there for um, four years. It was great. Uh, a lot of good guys come out of Raleigh, yeah. North Carolina, especially at Millbrook, I would say... Uh, Keith Marshall went to school there. Keith Marshall, I remember Keith Marshall. Keith went there. Yeah. His brother Marcus Mar Marcus Marshall went there. Mm -hmm. We got Sam Blue. We got Carly. We got Chris Clemens. We got a lot of you know yeah. a lot of people come from Millbrook. You know not just on the football side, but um, shout out to uh, Raj Rashid, Coach uh, Coach Williams. So I got to put him out there, you know. Hey. But uh, you know it it was a great school. You know I I miss you know sometimes I no I never you know have any doubts or regrets or anything about in high school, but mm -hmm. I just sometimes miss it, you know, because, you yeah. know, you never get that time back, so you take advantage of it. You got to. You got to. Take advantage, man. All right, one time for Larry. Take advantage, all right? Very good. Very good, okay? Who were your biggest inspirations growing up, Trey? Man, um, growing up, I would say, you know, I got him tatted on me, Walter Payton. Mm. But first, um, I would say my mom. You know, my mom's my hero. You know, she here That's today. Right. So, growing up, I would say my mom, yeah. Walter Payton, Muhammad Ali. Wow. I would say, um, yeah. Oh, Muhammad around here somewhere. We he got behind Muhammad you. Ali. He behind you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Muhammad yeah. Ali, yeah. I would yeah. say, um, uh -huh. Tupac Shakur. Very good. Biggie, even though, even though that didn't play out, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, they still are two legends. Tupac, I would say, Growing up, now that I'm getting older and understanding, like, the message behind how Tupac carried himself and how his mom raised him. Yeah. And how his mom raised him to understand, you know, the system. Yeah. And understand what the system is made of and, and not, and what the certain things not to do, obviously, to create a, a format against you. So, mm -hmm. I would say Tupac, and I got to go with, I have a lot, but my last one, I got to say is... uh his name is Eric Thomas, E.T., motivational speaker, one of the greatest motiv motivational speakers of all. Oh, and E.T., e. I got to go with E.T., and then I got a Inky Johnson, great dude, and then Very shout good. out to uh, Kali Muscle. I yeah. uh, watched him growing up um, a Very lot. Good. And um, I got a lot, but those are my guys that I watched, you know. Very good, man. Very good. And shouts out to the Shakur family. Definitely supposed to get an interview with uh, Matula Shakur real soon. Yeah, now, let me tell you, uh, in California, they just made a Tupac Shakur Museum. Wow. 
And when I tell you it is, it is an experience. Like I, I would really suggest you go there. Like if you ever in California, you been? I've been, and it was amazing. I, I never would have thought what I've seen, what I've seen. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but it is an experience that you would want to have. How long have they had it up? They um, probably about a year, because my rookie year they was building it, right? That's right. And then my second year. I was like, oh, it's done, and I went there, and it is it is a sight to see. I would say that's very good, Trey. That's yeah. what's up. I definitely got. Uh, that's all in. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say if you want to get some knowledge on what Tupac, as far as not just the movie, as far as how his mom raised him, mm-hmm. go there, and you're gonna see some stuff you would never think you would see before. That mm. that is, and you'll know why he's Tupac, not just because of his rap, but how he was brought up, that's born, right. like how he was raised from his mom. So that's what's up. It's Really a sight to see. That's very good. Black Panthers is a, a it was a big movement back in the day. Oh yeah. And I'm sure uh, Tupac learned. I know he did. Learned a lot from his mama and his daddy. A lot of wisdom. Okay, Trey. Why this game called football? Game of football. Mm-hmm. Mm. The game of football. What I what comes to mind when I think of football is a selective amount of young men and because there's women today playing so i gotta say that yes it is i would say coming together for one common goal which is a win right Mm -hmm. but it's hard Mm -hmm. so the game of football is a way of escape it is a way of where you can go out and put your hands on people legally yeah you know what i'm saying so i would say football for some a lot of where people were, you know, in the double R is a place where you can escape and yeah. you don't have to worry about nothing. You don't have to worry about no issues, no water not on, whatever is going on, but you worried about the next play and the man in front of me is going to feel me. You know what I'm right. saying? So I would say the game of football to me is escape. Yeah. And not only that, but it gives you that way of expressing your energy and, 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 and uh, what's the word? Expression, your aggravation, yeah, aggression, and all that. Oh yeah, because you know, in in life, we all have ag- aggravations, and yeah. you know, some people can't put it out because you know everybody can't play the game of football, so they channel their energy, their energy into something else. Boxing, and UFC, yeah, um, track, yep. all those things. But I would say football for me is would be escape because growing up, you know, I put my first. My first sport was basketball. Wow. I'm going to tell you, I didn't even, you know, I didn't want to play no football, man. Right. I was trying to ball. My mama tell you, like, I was on the, on the basketball court. They gave me the ball, man. I ran to the other hoop. I I, I'm right. trying to get the ball in the net. I know that's right. I don't know what y'all. I'm like, nah, the pass, the, nope, in my ball. I was I was Kobe. I was like, man, Kobe, before I even knew who Kobe was, I was out there, give me the ball. Right. So, football, for me, is just, it's a game that has blessed me so much. Yeah. But I would say... The under getting to know the understanding of the levels there is to know about football. That's right. As far as when you're a kid, mm-hmm. when you get to middle school, when you get to high school, yeah. when you get to college, yeah. and then you're blessed to play at the next level. That's right. Those are different levels, I would say. So football to me in all those areas is an escape. And I would say it has changed my life so purely. And, you know, I never would have thought the game would get me to where I'm at today. Mm. So... It's just been a blessing, man. Big blessings, man. Big blessings. Trey Larry in the building of uh, football, Raleigh's finest, okay? Tell me how was the recruiting process when Missouri recruited you? How was that process? Okay. So, Missouri, I only had six offers. I didn't have a lot of offers. Uh, just being real with you, I could have had a lot of offers, but, you know, unfortunately, at the end of the day, you know, I dug myself in a little hole in school. So, okay. what happened was – Missouri was the only school to actually wait for me to be qualified. So mm. that was a whole, you know, and it's not, you know, I don't have a problem talking about it. Like, you know, some people it's old. don't know, don't know about, you know, the whole situation. But basically, you know, some teams, they was like, it's no way you're going to be qualified. And yeah. Like, come to me, they'll come to my school and be like, it's no way. Like, they even tell my coach, like, it's no way he's going to be qualified. You gotta, you no gotta way. You got to get past that clearinghouse. Right. So my mom was up there. And she said, 
your ass going to college. <laughs> you going to college. <laughs> I can see her You going to go to college. You going to college. Somewhere. So, yeah, well, Missouri, is, is, they were the only school that I would say, shout out to Coach Ophadale. Yeah. Um, if it wasn't for him finding me, man, I don't know where I would have went. I probably would have been in North Carolina. But, you yeah. know, that's another story. But NC State. Yes. Probably been, I probably I wanted to go to UNC. But, yeah. you know, it played out how it played out. Yeah. Ophadale found me. And from there, man, you know, I think it was it – was, Perfect timing, perfect scenario, perfect situation for me. Yeah. You know, I went there four years, blessed, you know, left my name out there and being in the history books. But, you know, the most thing for me, though, when I was in college and I, that I, you know, rest in peace to TP, he, uh, my teammate, he just passed. Mm. Um, Terry Petrie, he just passed. Um, hey, rest in peace. He, we all played football together and coming in, you know, in college, it's just the bond that you have with your class is just so different because yeah. you, Every day, we was together, conditioning, mm-hmm. running. Every day, and and you build a bond with those guys, you know. Mm-hmm. And and I would say just the college memories of getting older. Then you get to your sophomore year, you get to your junior year, and mm-hmm. you know, unfortunately, in the game, this game of football is, you know, everybody can't play at the college level. And that's not meaning to say you can't play, but I've gotten told I couldn't play at the next level. As far as college, just because of my grades. Okay. But what I'm saying is, is though, when you're in college, there are certain guys that, you know, it unfortunately, their path, they'll go somewhere else. But at the end of the day, I created a bridge with that person. Yeah. So now, when they go somewhere, shout out to Adam Sparks, even though my man Adam went to another school, me and him created that bond to where no matter what, like, I call him, what's, what's going on with you? You good? Everything okay? Yeah, yeah, everything good, brother. I wish you the best. We are connected because Very we good. went through that, that, that phase in college of when you coming in and you're a freshman, yeah. and he was the first person I met when I got up there because I was going, I, uh, my school, we graduated late, so mm-hmm. I got there a little late. He was the first person I met when I was in the dorm. So wow. it's just right off the bat, mm-hmm. you creating that, you know, you don't even know this person. But at the end of the day, the game will bring – a selective a group of amount of women and men together. Yes, it will. Outside of it. So even if the football don't even – if if he's not playing football no more, I still got a, a relationship with him. Yeah, that's good. So okay. that's that's really, I, w- I would say, the game is, you know. And it's again, all rest about relationships. TP, man. It's all about yeah. relationships. Got to uh, keep your bridges, man. Mm-hmm. Hey, me and T's talk about that all the time. It's, it's very important. Okay. What's some other schools that was recruiting you at the time? Okay, uh, I had I had Boston College, App State, mm. North Carolina A and T. I would say wow, uh, App State's good. App State, yeah, but the App State offer that came from us going up there. We went up there for camp. Okay, so they seen me kind of develop. Yeah, more so because when I came out the gate, I didn't play varsity mm-hmm. for only I only played varsity for two years. Wow, so I didn't get to get the. You know the exposure as far as like you know the, hey, he moved he moved up to varsity. No, I was on JV. Coach Button was like, nah, he on JV. Yeah. So I was on JV. Okay. And for the past, we would go out there for camp every year, mm-hmm. and that just came with them seeing me, seeing me produce, mm-hmm. and they're like, you know, we want to offer him. You know, so I think going into my senior year, they offered me because the third my junior year, I had a, you know, selective. I would say I can't say great. I had a good year yeah. for me being in my first year on varsity, and we went back up there, and it was like we want to offer him. Good. So I'll say App State, North Carolina A and T, Miami of Ohio. Shout out to them. That was my first offer. Uh and I'm missing one school. James Madison University. That's good. So that's those home schools. I could have had more, but you know, that's not how the story played out for me. But um, you know, those are only schools, but at the end of the day, man, it played out how it played out. And and, and the thing is God to deal you your cards, but them cards only meant for you. Mm-hmm. So you made it worth your while either way. Mm-hmm. All right, Trey Larry in the building, best podcast, North and South. Okay, who do you think you model your game after that, as far as being a running back? So you like to wear that number 34. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I told you, man, he already tied him with Walter P, man. Sweetness, baby. Let's yeah. get it, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why I like to also my game. Shout out to Coach Ford, my coach, uh, running back coach in mm-hmm. college. That was his, me and him had the same favorite running back. So mm-hmm. when I finally got the number 3-4, you know, it was uh, – he was like, hey, man, you going to wear that number. You better play like it. <laughs> right. You know right. what I'm That's saying? Sure. That's for so sure. So, it, it's just um, my whole 
you know, when I was a kid, you know, I, I didn't know what I was doing, you know, watching the game of football. But mm -hmm. I don't know, 3-4 always stuck out to me, man. Like, yeah. every player that has worn the number 3-4 is a player. Yeah. And if you look at – and this is really – we're going to go deep. If you mm -hmm. look at the significance of the number 3 mm -hmm. and you look at of what, what it means, 3 and the 4, yeah. you'll – you'll find out why. I'm not going to tell you why, but I'm going to just tell you, if you find the significance of the number three and the number four, yeah, it is deep. So oh, wow. that number, if you – you got to look into it, but it is deep. Definitely will when I look get into home. It, yeah. Very, very good, okay. Tell all the viewers and the fans what goes into being a professional NBA – not NBA, excuse me. <laughs> you good, baby. You good. <laughs> NFL player on a daily basis. Daily yeah. basis. Mm -hmm. I would just say this. The NFL mm -hmm. is – a business of you being at your best every day, regardless of how you feel. Wow. Right? So what goes into it is a lot of sacrifice, dedication, and sometimes being a little selfish. Yeah. Because, you know, as a, when you're when you're at the at a level, you know, NFL, NBA, MLB, whatever sport, you gotta be a little selfish because at a the lot end, selfish. A lot of selfish. A lot. But at the end of the day, I would just say going what what goes into it is um those things I just said, but mm -hmm. if we wanna go deeper, I would say a lot of a lot of um So I'm going to give you a good, 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 great answer on this one. A lot of self-reflecting time. And what I mean is, mm -hmm. is that every day you go into the building as an NFL player, yeah. whatever you did last week or the day of or yeah. the day before, it don't matter. So every day is a representation. You're representing yourself every day in the NFL. Yeah. Not every year not every – oh, no, this every day. Every so day. even in the off season, even before we get to OTAs, even during OTAs, every day is a day that you are representing yourself. Because yeah. it's different from college because college, everybody – and we can get real. College and NFL, two different things. Right, okay, right. So as far as college – we weren't thinking that. Everybody come in, everybody do the lift, everybody do it. But when you get to the NFL, yeah. off season, you're on your own. Coach ain't calling you to work out. Right. Coach ain't telling you to go over the place. Coach ain't telling you to meet. That's your job. That's your job. That's your duty right. to do. So yeah. I would say it's self-inflecting. Like you have to really go into a mind space of you have to take care of your business. Yeah. Because if you don't, then there's no hiding. Right. And when I mean the NFL, what goes into it is everything is being watched. Everything is being evaluated. Yeah. So there is no such thing as hiding. Mm -hmm. You know, certain things you can hide in college. You know, certain things you gain. But when you get to the league, it gets exposed because there's no hiding. Mm -hmm. So. And, and the biggest thing I learned when my dad told me, he said, you got to be selfish because they draft players, not teams. Facts. So tap in, man. All right. You heard it first. Trey Larry. Uh, Riley's own uh, North and South, okay? What's the biggest thing that you can take away from this game that you learned? Hmm. And I guess you can go back to that self-reflecting part. Mm -hmm. I would say the biggest thing that I could take away from the game and put it in my life, mm -hmm. it, I would say that because, you know, everybody – you know, and every athlete has, you know, if not, you will. And I, I was, you know, a youngin that his name's his name is Ennis. Yeah. Um, he plays for the uh Missouri Tigers. Okay, okay. Um yeah. I would say, man, your your biggest thing you would take when when you're up top and everybody looking at you like, Man, he, he doing good, he's invincible, ooh, everything is going good. And then when you get that injury. Nobody talking to you, nobody calling you, yeah. nobody. Yeah. You learn more about yourself when you're at that state. Not saying that that's a bad point because mm -hmm. it's your mindset, how you react to that. And when you come back from that injury or from whatever situation, yeah. it's going to drive you into another mindset that you ain't had before. Guys have mental breakdowns. So the mental breakdown part is yeah. just the mental aspect of you not thinking like, wow, man, I was I was at the top. And then everything went down, mm -hmm. you know. But you got to understand in life, period, two, that you're going to have ups yeah. and there's going to be downs. That's right. But there you go. life ain't a game. 
and it's not something you can play with. So every day, I do my best to maximize everything, just everything, everything, everything. And I want to shout out to Austin Eck. Austin, shout out to Austin Eck, teammate, running back, uh, charges, Austin Eckler. So he, we always, you know, the running backs, we always talk about the mindset of how you can do better just outside of the game. Mm -hmm. Shout out to so Sony too. Uh, he Every day he talks about maximizing like when I'm done with football mm -hmm. I'm gonna take the same approach of the game right and put it into something else that's right so that is just something that's like wow like listen that's like wow that's that's something that we were just we talk about now we talk about how with the game of football when it's over I can still take the drive the motivation yeah the putting in the hard work dedication mm -hmm. all those things and put it into something else mm -hmm. but it just takes your mind on tapping in other things and right then you'll know but if you don't tap into those things, you don't know. That's right. And speaking of other things, what does Trey want to do after football is over? Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, I would say this, man. I love helping kids. So wow. as long as I don't care, man, I'm going to probably be a uh, – uh, uh, I used to go to this uh, after-school program called um, the Chavis Center. Mm -hmm. uh probably be, man, a student counselor, man. I, I, you know, I love helping kids, so the youth. But, you know – as long as I'm helping kids, That's just right. anything helping kids, I'm, I'm, you know, cool. Even though they, especially they're hard headed, but uh, the kids are the future. So it'll be a disservice for me at least not to give them some type of, um, let's just say, uh, game and let them know what's going on. That's but you know, right. now you just got to speak it in a different language because you know, kids like how we, how we used to look up to certain guys. Yeah. We used to listen. Now they can just look it up, so they don't care about that. So you got to give them they watch something. Everything. They watch. So you got to give them something more than just uh, mm -hmm. a talk. You got to give them a scenario. You got to give them all these things. So I would just love to do that. Probably mm -hmm. help kids, and then um, that's about it, man. Hey, that's it. That's it. That's it. Hey, tap in, man. All right, best podcast, Trey <laughs> Larry. Uh, what does the state of Raleigh mean to you? State of double R, baby. Um, it it means. A city of a city of people that are very, very loving, caring, and mm -hmm. are trying to get it day to day. Very good. And are trying to help each other get it day to day. That's right. Right? That's right. Okay. So, so that's what the city means to me. Because growing up I done had a lot of OGs help me, good. you know, get me right and get my head in in a space and area like, okay, you need to hey, Get you get your stuff right, you know what I'm saying. But at the end of the day, the city means to me is just a hard city, man. Where yes, it is. you got to get it how you get it. Rough, right? Rough, double R, baby. Mm -hmm. So I would just say, so a, a great amount of people trying to help everybody get it. Yep, that's it, man. Got to get it. Got, got to get, get it, man. All right. Hey, how cold is it out there, in Missouri? Oh man, <laughs> baby, it get cold out there now. Hey, let me tell you, let me tell you something, man. When I was up there. This is because, you know, in North Carolina, you know, we get snow and they, you know, no school today. Yeah. Boy, let me tell you. <laughs> it's, you seen the movie The Day After Tomorrow? Hey, I'm out there. I didn't have no snow boots. I had on some Jordan 1s. I'm in the snow going. Just, wow. Just going, walking to class, man, That's you tough. know. That's but it, it, it get cold. But at the end of the day, man, it I don't. I enjoyed it, man. I don't trade it. I wouldn't want to go nowhere else, man. It was. I, I loved it. I loved it. And it was funny because <laughs> it's not funny, but a lot of dudes from that go to Missouri, mm -hmm. they they ain't never driven in snow before. Yeah. So yeah, they were like, "Hey, uh, I'm stuck." I'm like, "Hey, man." I can't come get you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what you need to do is you need to turn the wheel to the right, turn the wheel to the left, run it, rev a little bit, get that snow out, and then turn the wheel all the way to the left where yeah. you're trying to get out and ride out. And he was like, Tree, I can't do this, man. Mm -hmm. Like, some people don't know how to drive in the snow, but it gets it get cold up there now. It get cold. I would say the coldest it ever got up there was mm -hmm. negative one time. It got negative 10. Boy, I can't live out there. 
a negative 10 one time. <laughs> it's okay. It's not that bad, man. It's not that bad. Okay. It's not that bad. But, you know, it, it, it was cool, though. I remember we had uh, snowball fights. You know, shout out to Aubrey Miller. We would be throwing snowballs at each other. Ty Tyree Gillespie be throwing snowball. We come in the house with things, snowballs, and throw it at each other. Wow. So it was fun, man. Very it was good. fun. Very good, man. I can't live out there. It's all right. It's not that bad. You know, yeah. shout out to Como, man. You get used to it after a while. You get used to it, baby. You yeah. got to. Yeah, that's it. My first spring, though. Woof, baby. Woof. Mm -hmm. All right, tap in, man. Hey, what's the biggest advice you can give to all the younger players coming up underneath you? Mm. Biggest advice, man. Okay. My biggest, the biggest thing that I could give all the youngins is in order to, if you think that you know everything right now, no, you don't, man. You don't. You don't know everything. I'm figuring out every day. I figure it out every day. Even though I'm growing in the NFL and all whatnot, I still yeah. – branch out to OGs to listen to to give me game. Yeah. Because if I don't do that, then I'm gonna be just out here doing stuff. Like, why did you do that? You could have came to me and got some game and learned some information about that. Right. I would say just listen, man. Like mm -hmm. learn how to listen. 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 Don't talk. It's always a response. But you if you listen, you might can obtain some knowledge yeah. and put it somewhere and when the situation happened you can use that knowledge but in order to get knowledge though you have to listen that's right you can't get knowledge without listening so i would say just listen man and then whatever knowledge you get from somebody i'm not saying don't take listen certain stuff you don't you comes out one ear not the other but the good knowledge you should be able to obtain and use it in the world Whatever, whatever you in, football, whatever, real world life, whatever situations. Yep, yep, that's all about. Uh, pay attention to this. Okay, tap in. Now, how, how, let me ask you this. How political is it in the NFL? Very. Very political. But, I mean, at the end of the day, though, I'm, this is what I can tell you, though. It's very political, but at the end of the day, it's about how your mindset is. Okay, okay. You know, so we can talk about mindset, right? So, no matter what goes on in the NFL, no matter what drafted, high, low, undrafted, every day, like I said, you represent yourself. Mm -hmm. So every day you can choose to come to work and have, oh, I ain't doing this. Okay. And then that's going to have a reputation on yourself of, oh, this is who he is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but it's about your mindset, though. You come in the same person every day and you don't give nobody no reasons, then you're you're fine. That's right. But if you give them a reason, yeah, that's when the ball's in their hands. So you have to mm. you got to understand that every day, again, you're representing yourself. Mm. So the political side, that's cool. That's the game of football. You got to deal with that. Yeah. But it's OK. But how you not react, respond to that. Mm hmm. It's different. Reaction and responding is two different things. Reaction is giving a quick, oh, you got me. No, no, no. Respond is something they wouldn't expect. Like, he actually responded to this. Yeah. Rather than react and then go off feelings because the NFL is not about feelings. Yeah. You don't have, it's no feelings, man. And it don't matter how big you are. It don't matter if you Antonio Brown, you start acting crazy if you want to. I ain't going to talk about AB, but yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, yeah. it's just, it's just it all about your mindset, man. Yeah. Like, however your mind is. And the thing is, mm -hmm. how I talk about what, what one, mm -hmm. what's one thing I can give to kids listen is because, yeah. I had OGs on the team now. Keenan, uh, shout out to uh, Jared Cook, tight end. Played for him. I played for him for a year. For a year, like play with him. OG played the game for a long time. Played for a long time. Played with Chris Harris. Junior, okay. shout out to the good bros. Um, he gave me some knowledge. Keenan, shout out to uh, my uncle. I call my uncle Smooth. Uh, his name is Jason Moore. Um, a lot of people, man. Like, and and this guys, shout out to Linval Joseph. I played with him for a year. Like, it's a lot of guys that you you can get game from, you know. Mm -hmm. But if you don't listen and you think you got it made, mm -hmm. then that's where that's it ain't where gonna be good for better. you. So as far as yeah. like I said, the mindset though, when you talk and you seek out the knowledge and you obtain it and you keep it, and when a situation happens, you know how to respond and not react. I like that man. One time, that's good. Hey, tap in, okay? Um, what do you think about the Brittany Griner situation? Her getting nine years in the Russian prison. Oh man, for ash oil. 
Oh man, I I low key feel bad. I really feel bad for her because um, yeah. that's that's tough. That's really tough. Yeah. Like I I and then I saw them. It was talking about that she got her parole revoked. Like she, she, they, you know they were trying to they was trying to release her. Yeah, and they said no. I feel really bad. You know, shout out to the uh, to the whole family. I I wish she could come home as soon as possible. You know, all we can do is just you know pray and hope. You know, to wish the best and hope everything that situation get held. But yeah, hey, I, you know, at the end of the day, man, you know, I feel bad, and I, I, you know, I would think about it. If that was somebody you knew, like you know, in another, you know. But it's 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 a tough situation. But at the end of the day, I just all we can do is just hope everything goes so but, well. But not only that, Trey, it's one thing. Okay, I got caught. Okay, um, give me my punishment. Mm -hmm. But it's another thing to detain me. For for longer than I should be. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's violation of the rights. Facts. You see what I'm saying? So that's where I got the problem with it at, but at the same time, we hope for a speedy process and a speedy recovery. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. What are you listening to before the game? So on your playlist. <laughs> <laughs> man, I listen to a little bit of everything, man. Yeah. I would, but, uh, man, I listen to, uh, Man, I listen to. Mm, oh, you listen to that many people, huh? I listen to a lot. You listen to a lot of cats, boy. Yeah, man. <laughs> even no, nah, even a lot of double R. I listen to Tusi. I listen to Coach Coach uh, Raj Rashid before the game. Yeah. I listen to even some of my homies that send me day tapes. I listen to them, but mm. I listen to. I have, but see what I do is I in my playlist I have a a game day playlist, right? Right. So I put. Emoji behind it, it'll either be emoji like go crazy or or it's you feel me like kill everybody. I don't mean literally, but it, it's playlist, it's get you in that mode, right? Yeah. So I'll put a selective amount of music in there, mm -hmm. but out of the double art I just named, artists, I will put uh Big Thirty. Big Thirty. Yevo. Uh Boo Shiesty, mm, Um cool. Lil Baby. Uh, young boy. Oh yeah. L. E. Chopper. Oh yeah. You in there? Um, in there, man. Um, G. Herb. Yeah. He got a song called Dope Boy. That's a great song. Mm -hmm. Um, but and I will listen to, but then I will go old school and I will put some Marvin Gaye in there, man. Yeah. And I will okay. put some uh Payback by you feel me, Mr. Brown himself. Come on, tap in. Buddy. James Brown, in, the man right. himself. I will put a lot of things in there because you know sometimes you know it'd be, you can't. It I'm 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 very selective with music. So mm -hmm. the time I play that playlist, it ride that whole time, right? So I know I put it in a timely manner to where I know where I'm gonna be getting tape in my locker or on the field. When I'm on the field, I'll have four songs that I'll play. That's okay, like get, your, get your mind right, get your workout in. But yeah. when I go in, it's dial, dial time. Dial down time, mm -hmm. get your stretch, woo woo. But those are all the artists I listen to. And all those artists that I just named though, they don't just have, you know, hard songs. They got songs that you can actually vibe to. So mm -hmm. them are artists that I listen to. Uh, good, hey, hey, tap in, man. Like I said, he's in there. All right, <laughs> what's your hobbies off the field? What you like to do? And, uh, well, since I've been in California, some things that I tapped into is uh, I would say going to the beach, but I don't like to go in the water, y'all. I just like to see the scenery, right? So I like to see the beach, and I would say uh, I ain't gonna lie, I don't really play video games like that. Don't nobody play video. Cash, games. don't get me, don't get mad at me, well, but you want to know some crazy? You want some real crazy? Go ahead, go Guess ahead. what? I ain't played Madden. That's crazy. That's crazy. Bro. I ain't played Madden, and wow. I don't, and people are like you ain't played Madden. I have not played Madden, man. It's a lot of money in them video games. I know, but I, I can't. I can't do it, man. I yeah. can't do it. Shout out to, shout out to all the gamers, man. I I, I just can't do it, man. But yeah. I would say the things I tap into some music sometimes. I like going to the studio, relax, make some beats, do something. But as far as that, I would say uh, also, um, you know. Acting, man, like, you know, I'm probably, you know, 
Try to get into a little bit of that in wow. a couple of years or two, man. Very good. So you know, good. trying to get into okay, you know, yeah. give them some some you some have multiple eggs in your basket. You know what I'm saying? So that's something I try to tap into: music, uh, sightseeing, and just you know a little bit of acting. Those mm -hmm. things I like to do outside. But the acting is just that's just my character. So that's something that I always had in me. So I would say you know, hopefully in a couple of years, you know, man, I get a shot. You know, you know, show them what's going on. But and I took an acting class in college too, which was live too. So Very that was good. cool. Very good. Very good. So you already had acting underneath your belt for a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, a little, okay. bit, a little okay. bit. All right. Favorite place you like to eat? Man, man, I ain't gonna lie. Yo, man. And when I was in high school, the spots was Chick Fil A, Cookout. And Bojangles, right? Ah, no boy love Bojangles. Go ahead. Keep but going, out keep of going. all three of those, okay. I got to put the Bojangles first. Ah, that bo -bo. Come boy. on, man. Same thing South Come on, man. That's what's up, man. You That's know what it is. That's what's up, man. No wrong with Bobos. Who's the best player you've seen on the field? Oh, that's a great question. Great question. You want college or you want NFL? Oh, okay. okay. The Very best player question. that I played against, linebacker Nick Bolton. Greatest linebacker I played against. Me and him, and the reason why, but this is the reason why he's so, why he's a great player, okay? Because Nick, I'm older than Nick, right? Nick came in, and I could tell right away, I was like, yeah, he, he going to be like that in a year or two. But his mind frame as far as, as far as, his nose for the ball and his savviness of knowing where the ball is going mm -hmm. and knowing the game, right? So I would say the years that he was there, I seen him develop into – the man, like he was. I remember when Nick Bosa, <laughs> Nick Bolton, Bolton. He oh. plays for the Chiefs. Okay. For the Chiefs. Okay. Got, yeah, last year he got drafted. He left, he left early. Wow. So okay. Nick, Nick is probably the smartest linebacker I played against. As far as if you're talking about a guy that knows where the ball is going all the time, mm -hmm. he knows where the ball is going, and it's not because of just his athletic ability. Because Nick. Is if you if Nick came here right now, yeah. you'd be like, what? You know, and I'm not saying Nick ain't big, but the thing is though, there's guys in the NFL that are huge. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, but yeah. Nick, it's it's this though, his mind. Yeah. Like as far as me and him every day, especially our senior year, we pushed each other every day to be our best selves every day. And it wasn't a hey, you chill. It was yeah. no, you make me better today, and I'm gonna make you better. And, and it's one thing to be all big and stocky. You can have that, but if you ain't got this right here, yeah. it, it's just only going to take you so Nick, far. Nick has it, man. He got yeah. it, man. And he's mm -hmm. doing it now. And he's proving it. Two years yeah. now, he's been a rookie. He got the green dot. He has the green dot. He is now a player that every week you go into it and you're going to be like, <coughs> who was this guy, Nick Bolton? He has the green dot. Now, NFL, best player I played against – he on the team. DJ Darwin James, shout out. DJ, DJ is, man, that man is a dog, man. Oh, and I like, because you asked me, like, why, who you go against. Some people say who I played against. DJ, I I'm going to give you two answers on that. On the defensive side, DJ, the reason why I give DJ that DJ is why I played against him was because I seen him every day at practice go hard on – and no matter what it is, even if we're walking through, he is going the same pace. He only know one pace. So I respect that. And he helped me my rookie year in camp. Helped me, you know, because when you're a rookie, you know, you're a deer in headlights. You don't know what's going on. He's like, man, hey, you've been playing this game your whole life. Just relax. Just play the game, man. We in camp, man. Ball out. Boom. You know, so I give DJ as far as, and the one thing I really love is that he hit. So I respect that. Hit, hit man, he be hitting. So I respect that, and I when he gets in there practice every day, and every day it's the same. I don't see nothing. DJ chill, no DJ. We every day. So I got to give it to DJ. And then on offense though, I have to give as far as the NFL, Keenan Allen. Keenan, Keenan. Heard that name too. Keenan, Keenan got it, bro. Keenan got it. I watch him a lot. And the thing is, though, you but well, I think like you're running back watching Keenan. Listen, you can learn a lot from Keenan. But the thing is, though, Keenan has done it for so many years to the point where that's him. It's Keenan. It's not something he can because if you look at his process of Keenan, like Keenan, 
Keenan had some ups and downs, and guess what? Now he's the guy. Like, people know him. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And it's not just because of mm. – just because, oh, oh yeah, he run. No, he is Picasso of running routes. Mm-hmm. I've seen him do people dirty and walk through. Because mm. people be trying – you got a rookie over there, he trying to guard Keenan. And Keenan like, hey, hey, make a move every day. Boom, got that. And you sitting over there like, I seen him do somebody before I leave. I was like, did he just do that? Mm. We were walking through. He did a little stem right. He said, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Came back, and the, run, and the linebacker kind of, oh, oh, I got to come back here real quick. But, no, I would say Keenan as far as just um, his sadness. And every day I literally just see him paint a picture every time he runs a route, right? Every time he does a drill, every time he catches a ball. All those things, man. Like, I just seeing it, you got to see it in person. It's, it's crazy. They're like, some of the stuff I've seen, I've seen Keenan come back on a route slide and catch the ball. You know what I'm saying? It's just crazy. It's, yeah. And this is an OTAs, though. But yeah. that just shows the competitiveness of guys. You know, like, and if my first conversation when I learned about the NFL, I asked Keenan, I said, what's up with that with that, with that that scar right there? He said, hey, man, I ain't letting them – I ain't letting no – I'm going to just keep the clean words. I ain't letting nobody get in my spot. You know what I'm saying? Like, he telling me right now, like, hey, this game is real, and sometimes you have to play – Regardless of how you feel. Yeah. So that was right there when I got on it. And, and Keenan from the – come on, man, from Greensboro, man, from the Rock, from Carolina, man. Come on, baby. Yeah, from Carolina, baby. Come on, let's go. And see, tap in, North and South, okay. Greensboro, though, you know, he yeah. round away one hour, but we good. Yep, that's it. Yeah, tap in. Uh, favorite place Trey wants to visit he hasn't been yet? Ah, man. Uh <laughs> Favorite place I want, man. I ain't really a traveler though, man. But I would say, out of the country or in the country, out, uh, the, country. Like out the country. I like out the country. I'll probably go. Oh man, probably go to um. Shout out to Kimon. Uh, he put he put me on this spot. It's uh, this is places where they got the the, the little spot on the water. Okay. It's nice. I don't know the exact area, but he told it to me. He said you can get them. It's a little spot. And it's out of the country, but I think it's um, mm. I don't think it's in Puerto Rico, but it's it's somewhere in that area. Okay. And they have uh the little little um not um houses, but little little shed things in the water. And mm. they got a bed in them and stuff. Yeah, it's nice. You know, so I want to visit there one day. I don't know exactly what it's called, but shout out to Key Mine. Okay. Shout okay. out to Key Mine, but I don't know exact spot, but um. It was is it, he is very nice. Very good. It's okay. Cancun, Cancun. Cancun. There you go. There Cancun. It, it there you go. Then came to me. All right. Who hit you the hardest? Who hit me the hardest? I ain't gonna lie. I don't. I don't. Nobody. 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 But like I said, those two guys that I named though, those are guys that I, as far as like every day, consistent. We like we. Hey, let's go today. Like let's go. Like every day. It, every day. It's it's not a a now. Okay. Now listen. When. Now, in the NFL, you got to be careful now. But I would say in college, Nick, me and him every day was going at it. Every day, man. And we made each other better. Every day we made each other better. So, I'll say that. Very good. Okay. Favorite move? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? The hardest part about being a running back that I feel like running backs don't get credit for is that we got to do three important things. Block first, because if you ain't protecting you, if you can't protect the quarterback, because who's beside us? The most prized, the most important person in order is the quarterback, right? If you can't protect the quarterback, you're not playing. Two, you got to run the ball, meaning you might get hit a hard play, and you got to get up and get back in the huddle and run the ball again. So that takes toughness. And three, you got to catch the ball out of the backfield. So you got to do all those three things. But I would say. The hardest part is the hits because running backs don't last in the league. That's that's the you know we know we we all know that right. But it takes a different running back to get hit hard and get back in the huddle and run and run the ball again. Yeah. So I would say that's the Multiple, hardest part. Over Multiple over quarters. Yeah. And and we can talk like it's you know I carried the ball in college my senior year. I carried the ball over 32 times a game. Damn. And then at one game, I carried the ball 40, 
41 times. I don't want to say 47, but it was 41. And I could have kept going, though. But the thing is, it's just when you it, – it takes a different person to want to play that position where you know you're going to get hit. When, I, when you get the ball, everybody is trying to hit you. And it takes a different person to run past 11 defenders. And the thing is, though – we won't be nothing without the O line because it starts there too. Yeah. But running the ball and when you get past, when you get past them trenches, it's on you. You got to make something. You got to make it do. My coach said you got when you get past the deep, <laughs> the deep field is where the money at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you got to make a guy miss, and it's and it and it's really, I would say it, the running back position is hard, man, because you gotta if first thing first, if you can't block, you ain't playing. You got to protect the QB, man. You got to protect him. So, I would say all those three things you got to do and regardless of how you feel. Yeah, that's very What's true. Oh, phew. Both are not good. Both are not good, but if – I don't want to pick one. But I would say, man, who – that's a good question, man. He said fumbling or getting the quarterback. Hit. Ooh, man. I got to go with fumble, man. You can't you don't want to you don't want to get the quarterback. But if you fumble, it, it you know what though? The crazy thing is though, it's it's the game of football, right? Yeah. You're going to you know, you don't want to fumble, right? But if you do fumble, this is where we talk about the mindset. How does your mind react after that, right? How does your mind react after you seen your quarterback get hit. At the end of the day, the football is a game that is not perfect, right? But at the end of the day, when you get on the field, all that, everything that you've been playing the whole game week, yeah, that was up, it's on film now. So everything you do, as far as what you prepared, how you prepared in that moment, then everything will be okay. So doing ball security drills, looking protections, going over those things, looking at the game plan, being dialed in, those things you got to be dialed into because the mistakes, I would just say this, the thing, I ain't going to lie, this is something that I've, I've took since I've, like, you know, only been in the NFL for a little bit. But college and the NFL are two different, totally different ball games, right? I played in the SEC as far as guys that are big, like, every week, SEC is the best conference. Sorry. Sorry, guys. As far as when it comes to, con you know, everybody want to say, I'm like, no, 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 no. But listen, let me tell you this right now. College and NFL, I would just say the things that you did well in college are easy in NFL. But the things you didn't do in, in, in college that was, was not, oh, mm -hmm. we didn't see, oh, you know, will get exposed in the league. Mm -hmm. The things you did that was easy, okay, they're easy in the NFL. We know here running. But can you do this, though? Can you play special teams? Can you – can you be more valuable outside of that? You know, because you can play your position, but if you want to talk about the NFL, you got to be you got to be able to play special teams in certain positions. So me, I have to play special teams. You know, that's just my position. I have to do that. But college, you know, you got guys, and this is just the truth. Man, I don't care about no special teams. But hey, man, if you wanna if you wanna get to the next, you better get right on the special teams because it's very important. I would say, and that's what I learned. So I would just say the things you did in college. That I did in college. That was easy. Play a little easy in the NFL. But the things that – certain things I didn't do, mm -hmm. you will get exposed in the league it's, because you can't hide. It's, 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 it's very competitive in the NFL. Boy, it's a different level. Okay. Favorite movie or TV show today in 2022? What you got? Favorite – I really watch movies. TV show. TV show. Okay. Oh, man, I'm going to give you a TV show. My favorite TV show is, man, I used to watch – Rob and Big, man. Uh, rest in peace, uh, Big Christopher, Big Black Boykin. I used to watch Rob and Big. Uh, uh, it was Rob. He, you know, he ridiculous, ridiculousness, and then uh, his Fantasy Factory. Oh man, come on, man. That's what's up. So, but my favorite show was those Rob and Big though, because like that was cool, man. Like I, I enjoyed them two living together and doing missions every day. Like I enjoyed that. You know, the show like how. Two people can come together, not know each other, not be the same race, and still have a bond, right? Mm -hmm. So I just really like that show. Favorite movie, Any Given Sunday, got to. My mom didn't let me watch it till I got a certain age. But I would sneak and try to watch it a little bit, right? Uh, okay. Favorite, yeah, yeah, yeah. At that time, they were doing a lot But you of know cocaine, what, though? But you know what, though? Right, sex. right, it is. But I would say, yeah. though, if I go, like, my top football movies, it'll yeah. be Any Given Sunday. 
Remember the Titans. Yeah. Varsity Blues. Very good. Very good. Friday Night Lights. Friday Night Lights. Boy, Booby Miles. Booby Miles. And then one more that was. Repu- oh, it was. Uh, Play- so Shane Falco, man. Yeah, Shane Falco. <laughs> I forgot the movie, but it's a good movie, though. Yeah, you a legend for naming all good. them. I forgot all about them. That was, yeah. <laughs> nah, for real, though. Okay. Yeah, I'm a, yeah, Rudy. Oh Rudy, yeah, gosh. Rudy. I'm, I'm old stuff. Water Boy. Uh, <laughs> what's the other one with uh light skin dude? He was played retarded. Uh, uh, Ray. Was it Ray? Radio, radio. 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 I never seen radio. You never seen radio? Uh uh-uh. uh. I need to watch it. I'm gonna watch that tonight. Okay, I'm gonna watch it. Yeah. I'm gonna watch it. Favorite NBA team? Um Charlotte. Got to rip the show. Ooh, that's right. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, right. Shout out to home. Dennis Smith. Shout out to everybody, man. Yeah, Melo all them ball. Okay. Uh, Gotti or Gucci? Oh, Gucci, baby. You know I'm a dog. <laughs> I'm a. I, I'm, all right, that's it. That's it. I gotta go with Gucci, man. Okay. okay. Ooh man. Um, my next question was favorite game or game assist, but you don't play the game. Ah, you know I try, but I gotta say PS5 though. Mm-hmm. But my favorite game. Fight Night Round 2. Okay, Fight Ooh. Night, Fight Night. T's likes Fight Night. Oh, no, no, it's Fight, fight Night Champion. Fight night champion. champion. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's my favorite game, though. That's good. That's good. I like it. Yeah. Boy, you got it, boy. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. Come on. I'm old school, man. I got an old soul, man. Yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Trey, who do you do this for when you wake up every day? She right over there. Mm. She right over there. Mm. Yeah, man. I'll be real with you. Uh, my mom might cry, but my mom, uh, when I was a senior in college, right? Mm-hmm. She called me one day. She was like, "Hey, Trey, I need something, right?" She said, "I need some money." She didn't want to ask me that, right? Yeah. But I t- made a vow, like, cause this is how you know your your, your mind changed in college, right? Mm-hmm. This is just my this this is just my personal thing. Yeah. If you're in college and you're doing it for yourself, it's you're gonna fail. There's no way. Okay. It's no way, bro. Okay. You can't it's you can't have that whole amount of pressure. If you're doing it for yourself, yeah. even Prime did it for his mom, right? Yeah. Look how great a player he was. But the thing is, if you go through cause when I went when I, when I was a freshman, mm-hmm. I said, you know what? I need to get my feet wet. I need to start playing. Sophomore year, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm okay. Doing good. Get my name on the map. Now, junior year, that red dot on your back. Yeah. Now there's people game planning against you, right? That's right. Senior year, it's like you need to know now why are you doing this because everybody gets to a point in college of like bro, why am i doing this yeah you love the game yes you love the game yeah but mm. who you do it for though because if you're doing it for yourself it's no way you you're going you're it's you're you're not going to be happy to be able to have that i, I want to i'm just i'm scoring touchdowns for me my mama drove 14 hours to every one of my football games mm-hmm. do you think for one second that i'm gonna have my mama come down there and she not see me ball out Come on, bro. No, no, just, nah, oh, bro. I, I, I was called talking. <laughs> shout out to, shout out to my uh, boy. He was like, "Hey, still running hard." I'm like, "You see that woman up there?" <laughs> like, no, man. I do this for my mom. So yeah. that that is my why. Like, you know, every day I wake up, you know, and at the end of the day, I still do have some personal goals of mine. But it's like, who you do it for? She right there. That's good. Very yeah. good, man. Trey Larry in the building. Sports business media. I ain't hip hop, man. Let them know where we can find you at on all platforms, big money. man. Follow me on uh, Instagram at Trey Larry, Twitter at Larry Roundtree underscore. Let's underscore at Larry Roundtree the third. So y'all follow me there, man. Show some love, man. Appreciate you. All right, sports brothers media. I am hip hop, Meg. You heard it first. Riley's on Rough Riley. Trey Larry. Double R, baby. Appreciate it, man. <laughs>